Well, today on Nation a Window Cleaning Podcast, we are going to have our six-year anniversary show. So if you're here, if you're in business, stay tuned. We're talking about building a better business, and stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, welcome. This is the six year anniversary show. Uh, this show has gone on every single week now for six years straight. Not missed one single episode yet. So hopefully you go look and watch uh, all that good stuff. There's tons of episodes. Go binge anywhere podcasts are. It's even on YouTube if you want. And that's where kind of the conversation is. So if you ever want to talk on there, definitely jump on, put comments. Um, fun fact, by the way, uh, like 200 times, there's like 20 times more people listen to this as a podcast, usually probably while you guys are working. If you are, just uh, drop a line to me and say, yeah, I listen while I work. Or wherever you listen. But more people listen than watch on YouTube. But we put it on both platforms because why not? Right? Yeah. Uh, so, yes, have a look around. Uh, obviously, this has been for a while. Uh, if you don't know who I am, my name is Jersey. And I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. That's actually what I do as my form of employment. Uh, so, if you need a rep, what you do, let me put your orders in. Uh, that would be like a super amazing, awesome... Uh, six-year anniversary present to let me be your rep and put your orders in. Uh, if you're online on our web website at windowcleaner.com, just go ahead and click save this cart when you're in checkout. It's above the checkout button. If you save the cart, text me at 862-312-2026. Be like, yo, Jersey, it's in the cart. I go ahead and place it. I'll verify address and uh, yeah, you become my customer. And then from there, I can put all your orders in. Big or small, it doesn't matter. That's my shameless plug. I've done that now uh, every episode for six years. <laughs> so hopefully it's sinking in. Uh, a lot of you use me. Um, and I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I love, love, love helping people. Um, and uh, letting me put orders in allows me to continue to do stuff like this because that's how I can uh, eat and put you know gas in my car. So thank you to everybody. It really, really genuinely means a lot. And I want you to be a cool kid. I'll give you a uh, limited edition sticker. Just remind me because I forget sometimes. Um, but yeah, 862-312-2026. That's my number. Okay. Uh, if you haven't yet, also go to the uh, or go to awcmag.com and get the American Window Cleaner Magazine. It's amazing. It's a real paper magazine. Goes to your door every single month. Uh, some of you haven't gotten a subscription yet. What the heck, man? Uh, go and do me the biggest favor. Go there and get a subscription today awcmag.com. If you're listening to this and you're out in the field, take a second. Just go there or write yourself a note or say, uh, hey, Siri, uh, remind me of this and this and this. Um, let me know. Um, yeah. Anyway. Okay. So uh, here it is. We're on uh, to the episode and now my Siri is yelling at me um, because I said her name. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> that backfired. <laughs> but go and do all that stuff. Okay, so we're talking today. I thought, what am I going to do? Kind of, this is a big one. I wanted to kind of talk about something. And I thought, well, what can everybody do? And when I'm recording this, it's actually uh, June. June. Dang. Um, and uh, I thought, well, everyone, everyone can build a better business. Everybody can improve on what they're doing. And most of the stuff that we talk about here on Nation is all business. I'm not ever going to show you how to squeegee a window. Not in this series. It's not what I do. But it's more the business side of things. And everything you do, you listen, you read. You have the American Window Cleaner magazine. Maybe you're watching YouTube videos. Maybe you listen to podcasts. Maybe you go on the forums. All that stuff is to build a better, more knowledgeable you, right? So you're already doing a ton of that to kind of better yourself, better your company, be smarter. I'm telling you something right now. B between now with you and your competition, if your competition isn't reading 
a magazine about window cleaning, if they're not listening to a podcast about the business of window cleaning, if they're not watching YouTube videos on window cleaning, if they're not on the forums or Facebook groups or looking at Instagram pictures or stupid TikToks by your favorite window cleaning podcast host, uh, if they're not doing all that, you are inherently going to be better than them at business. You're going to be better than them at the industry, at the knowledge. Dinosaurs die. That's a a terribly morbid thing, but if somebody is stuck in their ways, they're just never going to be better, never going to be anything different. Cool. But the other people who are always learning and always kind of figuring things out and always doing stuff are going to be better. And that's you. You're here listening right now to a podcast about window cleaning, which 99.99999% of the uh, entire world doesn't even know that exists. But yet, here you are, listening. There's thousands of you listening right now. That's amazing. That's amazing. But you're always bettering your business. So when we talk about bettering your business, it is not a... uh, slam on you having a crappy business. This is not the case. But everything, everything from WCR to my brand of Jersey to the podcast to everything could always be better. Always. None of us have the pinnacle of amazing. Even Elon Musk and whatever company of his that you really like could be better, right? So we're just always talking about bettering business. And there's Some things in business that I want to bring up because we talk about it all the time and that's what we're talking about today. And I got to put one out there because there's so many of you listen to this show. Uh, By the way, if you are listening to this, uh, leave a review if you're on iTunes or thumbs up a video on YouTube or follow me on uh, YouTube, my own personal channel, uh, WCR Nation, uh, Jersey, WCR Nation, whatever. Do something and say what's up uh, and, and tell me hi. But... It's bigger isn't always better. Being a bigger company does not equal a better company. There's a a, a myth in business, small business, any business, is that if you have more employees, more trucks, bigger, you you somehow have a better business. No, that just means you have more work. That's all that means. It doesn't mean you're profiting more. It doesn't mean you're stronger. It doesn't mean you're healthier. It doesn't mean you have a better business because to me and to almost everybody, having a better business is actually having a business that is strong, super secure, and profits a ton of money, right? I know companies, and I'm not throwing anybody in the bus if you're uh, watching right now. This isn't just on you, but just... We've talked about this before. But there's companies out there that are doing about $3 million a year that profit like $30,000 a year. If you're doing everything that is entailed to have a $3 million business a year, but you're only profiting like ten dollars to $30,000, that's a problem. You could be your own window cleaner, get a truck and squeegee and make $30,000 a year working super part-time, right? And I understand payrolls and everything's out of that. You're probably getting a great salary. You know, that's $100,000. But the profits are what we're looking at. The profits mean that that's the money left when everybody else gets paid. Expenses, everything. And yes, I know we're trying to find all the deductions we can. But that to me is pretty shocking that there's people out there like that. So having a bigger business doesn't mean that it is better. It just means it's bigger. That's the only thing that that means. Bigger means more headaches. Now, not saying it's not worth it and not saying that when you are a big company like that, you can't have an amazing company. And I know companies that are doing in the, uh, what is that, seven figures that have amazing companies, amazing companies, One of my uh, favorite people in the whole world out of Atlanta uh, has a giant company and does phenomenally. Such a smart dude. But it's not because the company's big. It's because what he's doing is amazing. 
right? What he's doing to profit and to advance and to grow and to all of the pieces that he's done are all falling into line. Strength comes from numbers. Now, that dumb quote is for like, you know, strength in armies or whatever. But think about that in business. Numbers don't lie. And if you're profiting, meaning after everything, your pay included, if you can profit $100,000 a year, but that other guy's doing $30,000 a year, I didn't tell you how big the company is. We're looking at just profits. Which company is doing better? Which one's bigger? Which one's stronger? Which one's better? If you're profiting, say 30K, the other guy's profiting 40K, it doesn't matter how much money or jobs or work or size of company or crews or, ah, it doesn't matter all that when you look at just the numbers. Shut it all away. Bigger isn't better. Now, if bigger is in your cards, like, like if you want to be bigger, that's phenomenal. I know a lot of you that want to be bigger, and I always wanted to be that bigger guy. I always wanted to be bigger. I always wanted to grow. That's absolutely awesome. And you can do that. You could be the guy that's big and profiting hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? You could be that guy. But just because it's bigger doesn't mean it's better. You have to be better to be better, right? How do you get there? In your company, how do you be better? Doesn't mean be bigger, it, be, it means being more efficient. And here's an interesting concept, right? Everybody can get more things done or make more money per hour, but not everybody can have more hours in a day, right? Everybody, no matter if you, you know, sweep a floor or you squeegee a window, or you do heart surgery, or you're curing cancer. Everybody has 24 hours in the day. That, that's it. What you do with those hours, that, that's what is really different. And a big thing that people always think about is, like, well, if I get more work, if we get more work, oh, if I just work a little harder. Hard work is amazing, and it takes a special person to do that, but efficiency is where it's at. I'll put out another scenario for you. And I know, I know you got to be efficient, but just, look, just let's look at efficiency real quick. Dumb it down in numbers and talk about it. But if you do, we'll say $100 worth of work. If that takes you eight hours, you've done $100 worth of work. If that takes you 15 minutes, you've done $100 worth of work. The thing comes in in efficiency is the time it takes to do that. If it takes you one hour to do $100 worth of work, then if you really want to talk numbers, that's $100 an hour. If it takes you eight hours, 10 hours to do that $100 worth of work, you only made 10 bucks an hour. Okay? Efficiency allows you to do two things. It allows you to make the same while working less, or it allows you to get more things done in the same amount of time, increasing what you do, right? The simple concept, if you do $200 in that same amount of time, you've made more money. It doesn't mean making more money that you have to work harder. It doesn't mean that you have to go work 10, 12, six, seven days a week. It doesn't mean that. And I know some of the companies out there, uh, some of them that I know uh, don't actually listen to this. So uh, if you are watching, uh, I'm sorry. But there's some of you out there who go, well, if I just do Saturdays and Sundays, I'll just work seven days a week. And then I'm gonna do uh, some nighttime, you know, janitorial stuff or whatever. Now you're working 12, 14 hour days. You're like, yeah, I'm making money. Why would you work 14 hours of the day to do what you could do in just a couple hours if you worked more efficiently? Okay, so efficiency, we already understand, makes sense, but you could be more efficient in your business. Your routes could be tighter if you're doing route. 
Your scheduling could be tighter. Your jobs that you do in cities could be closer. You could increase the amount of money that you're charging so that it covers all of those other things to make the whole thing more efficient, right? You could not have to drive from the job back to the shop to grab something to go back to. You could have everything. You could do a day worth of uh, pressure washing and then the next day be window cleaning. That way you're stuck in the same thing. You're working on those efficiencies. All of us can improve the efficiencies of our business. And that does not just mean of us, but of our business. How many things can get done? And if they can get done in less time, let's do that. If there's things that we can add or increase or do or do that create more income, do that. Efficiencies in a business is how you make more money while not having to work harder. Getting more jobs, everybody, everybody is out there going, I need more customers. I got to get more customers. I'm looking for more customers. I'm advertising. I'm doing this. That's great. But everybody's focused on that instead of efficiencies. What do you have? How do you do it better? If I do something in one hour versus two hours, I make twice the money. And I work less. Efficiencies are how you can make your business better. Guaranteed. But you have to find out what your efficiencies are lacking in your company because every company is a little bit different. The next thing to kind of be a better business is to always be selling. ABS, we've talked about this. Always selling, always marketing, always all of that. I know for a lot of you, there is times and places and you get too busy to advertise and uh, you fall behind. We've talked about the marketing calendar a thousand times. Marketing calendar, real quick, if it's new to you, is laying out everything you're going to do every day of the week once busy season starts. All laid out no matter what happens during the day. Here's what you do. Boom, 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 boom. If it's raining, if it's busy, if it's slow, if it's, you know, here's all the things that happen. And if it's like that, then nothing can mess with that and it will always happen. But for some of you, you go, oh man, it's June right now. Coming out of spring, maybe you're in spring, maybe, you know, it's this is busy season for you. But some of you go, oh man, I'm not even thinking about it. But then when, you know, December comes, you're going, oh man, I got to advertise. I got to do all these things. I've had people, all winter people, I mean, look at the messages on Facebook, look at the messages people send me and, and the people that talk to me, go, how do I get more work? It's December, you don't. It's very, very hard for you to get work in the middle of winter. So what do we do? We talk about billboards, we talk about McDonald's and all that stuff. We already talked about that. But the easiest time to sell a cheeseburger is when somebody's hungry. Let's put a picture. Picture on a billboard. Somebody drives by at dinner time. They will go to that McDonald's because they see the picture and go, oh, yeah. At six in the morning, when they drive by, they just ate breakfast or they don't eat breakfast or they don't want a cheeseburger or they're vegan. or they're... Those people don't see the same thing in the billboard. Right? So for you and your business, you have to be advertising when you're busy. If somebody is calling, if your phone is ringing off the hook, you're like, nah, I can't even advertise. I can't advertise right now. Yes, you can. Of course you can. Now's the time to advertise. If you could get 50 more calls a day right now, that would be amazing because you're not getting that in winter. You take those and you fill the schedule. I know a lot of people who only advertise in the winter. And it, it's a little counterproductive, I feel. With your advertising and selling things, same thing goes with SEO. SEO is an all-time thing. It's an always thing. If you have an SEO company, don't turn them off. I bet you, if I talk to Monk, Justin Monk, who I use, Monk SEO, blah, 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 you guys know that. If I talk to him, uh, who's a good friend, and I said, hey, how many people... Does anybody turn off SEO in the winter? I guarantee you'd say yes. There's so many people go, well, why am I paying for SEO right now? It's, it's January. No one's calling. Of course not. But SEO is continually building so that when spring comes, you're here. 
Then through winter, when spring comes, the next year you're here. SEO is always building. It's the old adage that um, stopping advertising to save money is like stop brushing your teeth to save on dentist costs. Doesn't make sense. The overall benefit to advertising, to growth, to everything is getting those new customers in. Now, even if you continue to advertise, but you jack your prices up, double your prices, you're still going to get a couple people saying yes, but most people are saying no, but you're still in that advertising thing. I don't ever suggest that, obviously. You have to look at your ROI and split tests and all that stuff. But when you look at putting it all together, advertising, it should always be thing. It should always be marketing. It should always be improving. You should always be Facebook posting. You should always be Instagram posting. You should always be adding new pictures to your site. You should always be doing sales, marketing, all that. Always. And another thing to do to get a better business is to focus on your experience. The experience a customer has in your company. A lot of times we're more worried about getting that new customer. Or if you listen to me, you know, looking at getting a um, existing customers to do them, all that stuff's great. But how is your experience? Now, the experience, which I will take this to the hill. But the experience of your company is if I call you and go, hey, this is Jersey. I'm looking to get my windows clean XYZ. This is my address. And you say, okay, great. Here it is. Blah, blah, blah. We can do it on Tuesday, eight o'clock. And I say, awesome. That already started the experience with your company. I want to call and get somebody super bubbly. I want to get my pricing right away over the phone. Don't do in-person estimates. That's my opinion. I'm just some dummy. Uh, so if you are like, dude, Jersey says this all the time and I think he's an idiot, that's cool. Totally cool. Uh, but I don't think you should do that because it's fast. It's easy. It's all of those things, right? All of those things can all happen at once. On that is once your experience, when people are there, when it's all done, your experience does not include, or I should say is not, uh, the main thing is not the cleanness of the windows. Cause if it's clean, it's clean. It, that's it. That's assumed anyway. Everything else is the experience. What does somebody feel when they come to you? Why does somebody choose you? Why does somebody choose you again? Advertising and sales is what gets people the first time. That's great. Advertising sales, awesome. They saw your pictures. They saw your thing. It was great. They talked to you. Man, I really like that guy. Experience starts. They book you. Now, after the thing, they're so happy. You do the dentist clothes at the very end of it. Everything is awesome. You created this thing. They felt amazing and warm. And yes, of course, I want to have my windows done again. Advertising didn't get you repeat business. The experience did. Now, I've never, ever met a company who said that they're under 90% return. But what they're looking at is not frequency, it's just that if those customers ever come back. And I'm telling you, if you say it's 90%, you didn't do the numbers. Because what, what are you gauging that on? Every two years, every four years? If somebody uses you again after four years, does that consider that they use you again? What percentage of your company is using you every single year what percentage of your customer base is using you every six months? A, it's how you ask. It's how you get them to do that. But it's your experience. If you have the most amazing thing ever that's ever happened from anything ever, that's a lot of evers. But if that's, if that's it, they're going to want to come back right away. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's why people use meth. <laughs> arrow and crack whatever they use it one time to go oh my god this is the greatest thing i ever did i'm going to use it forever and kill my entire life by the way if you love my analogies um every single time i do some kind of stupid off the chain analogy i always get people that send me text messages and things that mention that so there's another one there right it's the experience if you go and eat potato salad it's been sitting in the sun and you get super, super sick. 
When you eat, ate the potato salad, it was probably good. I think that was a good potato salad. But you had, you know, violent stomach issues for 24 hours. You'll never eat potato salad ever again. Some of us have done that uh, with drinking. If you uh, have drunk, drank, right? There's something you can't have anymore, right? And if that is the case, it's because the experience, the taste didn't change. The window didn't get any cleaner or less clean. It was the experience you had. Oh my gosh, I can't do that. Last time I did that, I passed out in the snow and blah, 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 blah. Your experience is so much more valuable than you possibly think. And you can always make your experience better. An experience will get you the big companies, the strong companies, the ones that have lots and lots of work. It is the experience that keeps people coming back. I know people who start doing the dentist closed, which by the way, if you haven't, I babble about the dentist closed forever, but I have only heard amazing things from you guys who have actually tried it, confidently tried it. Even the people who are like, yeah, I don't know if it works. 60% people are still getting to book again, right? The big part is, is that the side of the um, experience is what keeps those people coming back. Give them an amazing experience. Make them feel fantastic. Dentist closed. They're back in six months. If every one of your customers does it every six months, think of where your company would be right now. Crazy, right? And the last thing, and I'm speaking directly to you on this one, but your hustle can't be matched. That's how you make your company better. Now, I don't ever want to tell somebody to hustle and burn themselves out until they just can never recover because lots of people have done that. I know lots of window cleaners who have just jumped and sold their company because they burned themselves out. That happens in everything. I'm not saying that. But your hustle, what you put into your company is what makes it amazing. The companies that I know that are phenomenal, they're, they're, they're just amazing companies, it's the owner whose hustle cannot be matched. Nobody is touching him. The next guy shows up to work. is like, oh, all right, well, let's do it. This guy's on the time. Man, I woke up at 4 a.m. doing these things. doesn't mean work more. It means your hustle. Where's your focus at? If you sit there for eight hours and the guy next to you sits there for eight hours doing work, but you are laser focused you have your systems in place, your efficiencies are there, the amount of stuff you can do in eight hours will blow the other guy away. The hustle is yours. The hustle is the only thing that I can't teach you. The hustle is the only thing that you can't read a book about. It's the only thing that you can look at and go, wow, these are all really great ideas. And it is only up to you to do that. It's up to you to build a better business. The reason that private coaching works, that there's so many people that reach out for private coaching, is the accountability to the hustle. Yeah, there's problems. It's great to talk to somebody. It's amazing. But the other side of it is that there's so many pieces to that that it just doesn't translate over. The hustle only happens when you hold yourself accountable or you have somebody else hold you accountable. If it doesn't get done, then you're just the other guy doing eight hours. What did he do? He spent an hour on, uh, on uh, TikTok watching videos today. Nothing got done. The other guy spent an hour working on his business. That's why his business is bigger, better, stronger. Just take him and now make that you. You are working on your business. You are always doing something to improve your business. You're not wasting your time. Your efficiencies are amazing. And look at the stuff that you can accomplish. Look at the things that you are able to do that the other guy can't. You're listening to a podcast of some dumb guy babbling about window cleaning. Maybe you subscribe to American Window Cleaner Magazine, right? Maybe you have all of these things in place. You've watched the videos. You've seen Steve's, Steve-O's stuff. You've done all that. The other guy's not. Your hustle and how much you're putting in and your focus and your drive 
is what makes your company a better company. Things fall into our lap sometimes, but that's going to happen if you do something or not. So don't wait for something to fall into your lap. You do it. Go get it. Do it. Be it. This is your thing. This is your company. Go and do that. I want to start off by saying thank you for being here for the sixth year episode. And I'm going to give you a shameless plug. I'm going to put it out there one more time. Um, By the way, if you're watching and you're on YouTube and you've made it this far, just put the number six. I don't know that you've made it this far. Um, But I am a rep for windowclear.com. That is what I do to make money. It costs you nothing extra to use me. But I make some cheddar to do that. So please do let me put your orders in. That's what I do what I do. My number is 862-312-2026. It's a cell phone. Text me. Call me. Make sure you're logged in. Click save this cart. I can see it. And I hit go instead of you. And boom. It's a virtual high five of awesomeness. And you become my favorite person. If you're not already my favorite person. So do that. And go get a subscription to the American Window Cleaner magazine. Just go to awcmag.com. And get yourself a subscription. Get the stickers, get the posters, and everything else. Be a window cleaning nerd because that is amazing. That's what I am. And hopefully you are too. Again, that all comes back to your hustle. Anyway, I digress. Thank you so much for everything you guys have done uh, for me. It means the world um, to me to let you guys use me to put orders in and ask questions and and help build businesses and all that stuff you guys it's phenomenal and it has been nothing but um amazing and it's been nothing but my luck to be able to do this and help people and um if i've ever helped you in any way um thank you for letting me do that so um thank you for six years and uh uh until next week Go out there and hustle. Make your company just better. But more importantly, be epic.